Ethnic Chinese make up more than 70% of Singapore's population. Many modern-day Singaporean Chinese are descendants of immigrants who came from China's southern provinces as early as the 1800s. But Singapore was more than just a prosperous port city that attracted settlers from China. I've got a lead that this island played a much bigger role in Chinese politics on the mainland decades before the Second World War. In the 19th century, Singapore was a booming British settlement with 100,000 Chinese people that made up over half of the island's population. Some Chinese became very wealthy from trade, but despite having made it in Singapore, most still saw China as home. In 1937, Imperial Japan began an all-out conquest of the Middle Kingdom. The invasion sent shockwaves through the Singaporean Chinese community. Their patriotism spurred them to coordinate local effort to aid their homeland. It was called the China Relief Fund, and it mainly sent money or military equipment to the Chinese forces. Ironically, because the British Empire had not yet declared war on Japan at the time, the Relief Fund was considered an outlawed rebel movement. Some of these clandestine rebel bases remain even today, hidden amongst the office and residential neighborhoods of Singapore. We'll be getting a unique insight into two of them, and our first destination is a Chinese temple. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Hello. Anthony. Chan Chao Hua is a local historian who published a book on Chuanglin Monastery's anti-Japanese war efforts. This monastery was founded in 1898, so that makes it the first and the oldest Buddhist monastery in Singapore. What was the significance of this monastery to the immigrant Chinese community here? On one level, you can say that this monastery was modeled after an original one in China. So to the Chinese migrant at the time, this looks a little bit like home away from home. So we know when they come over here, this monastery represents a cultural space that they were familiar with and relates to their own cultural identity. At the height of the anti-Japanese resistance in Singapore, the monastery was overseen by Abbot Pu Liang, an active supporter of the Chinese Relief Fund. The abbot would soon open up the vast 20,000 square feet temple grounds to train young Chinese men and women to form the Nanyang, or Southern Ocean, volunteers. So then the Nanyang volunteers, then this was a group of both drivers and mechanics that were trained specifically for the purpose of providing supplies via the Burma Road up to the Chinese forces that were fighting the Japanese. Correct. By 1941, Burma Road was China's only link with the outside world. But when they were constructing the Burma Road, they also realized they did not have enough drivers and mechanics in China. In the case of Singapore, there were a lot of people who wanted to volunteer, but their driving skills were not quite up to mark. So China Relief Fund officers in Singapore decided why not train them and then allow them to go. The training of the Nanyang recruits didn't take place in the monastery, but on a vast section of its grounds. Over the turbulent 20th century, Singapore modernized and grew. So today, the monastery has lost its large footprint and the training ground is no longer visible. When you look around today, all you can see are these modern apartment blocks. And you would never suspect that right here at this location was the training grounds for drivers and mechanics who are going to be used in the China relief effort. Tragically, Abbot Pu Liang also disappeared without a trace. When Singapore fell to the Japanese in 1942, he was arrested and was never seen again. Chan believes that the abbot was likely among the thousands of Chinese victims who were purged by the Japanese in what is now known as the Sukqing Massacre. 